Hey everybody, my name is Spaz and I'm a CD junkie. On this episode of CD Junkie, I'm going to be talking about the Jesus of Cool himself, Nick Low. And like every other CD junkie, I like to discuss how I got into the artist and this is kind of kooky. So I'm at uh, Licorice Pizza, which was uh, a, a record store, a chain of record stores in Southern California. And uh, I bought whatever record it was that day. Uh, you know, probably had my allowance because this was 1978. So I wasn't either late 70, early 79. So I did, wasn't quite working yet. So I had my allowance. Whatever I bought was either Yachts or Brian Tchaikovsky or The Clash or The Jam or something. But they're playing this record in the store. And as I'm, you know, uh, shopping and then, you know, because I knew I went to Licorice Pizza to get a particular album. So they had it and I'm walking out with it or, or, or I'm walking up the counter to pay for it. And then I'm just hearing, you know, I've been hearing a couple songs. I'm going, well, this is really melodic. This is really cool. What is this? So I looked up in the now playing and it was a brand new promo LP of Pure Pop for Now People by Nick Lowe. So I look at the back of the album cover, I'm looking, I'm going, Nick Lowe, I know that name. Oh, that's right, he was a producer. Because I'd seen his name maybe on like a Reckless Eric record, Elvis Costello, of course, uh, Graham Parker. I mean, I mean, he was a big producer at the time. So, uh, but of course I didn't have any more money because I had already bought whatever it was and I took it home and played it and loved it. And I kind of almost forgot about Nick Lowe that day. But that night I had a dream that I was being chased through apartment complexes in Orange County. And of course, you know, here it is, 15 years old. I'm frightened to death. Somebody's chasing me. They're going to kill me. But I'm clutching the, the LP of Pure Pop for Now People. And through the whole dream, I'm trying to protect it and to save it. And, and you know, because I wanted to keep it because I really enjoyed it while I was listening to it uh, while shopping at Licorice Pizza. So that very next week I got my allowance, I went and I bought the LP of Pure Pot for Now People. Now, this is the CD version of Pure Pot for Now People, uh, and, and, and I'll get to it in a second here. But this is the album that started my uh, journey with Nick Lowe, and I've followed him for, what, 40 years now. But let me, you know, I'm not going to include any live albums or anything like really super obscure, but there are some uh, surprising treats in here. I'm going to start off uh, my CD journey with Brinsley Schwartz. And Brinsley Schwartz is a band that Nick Lowe was in. He was the main singer-songwriter, uh, but the band, uh, you know, it also had like Bob Andrews and Brinsley Schwartz who went off to form The Rumor, uh, who backed Graham Parker. Uh, and and uh, later on it had um, Ian Gom, who also had a solo career, um, you know, very similar to Nick Lowe musically. But this is like their first two albums. This is like the third and fifth album. And this is like the fourth and sixth album or something. So you can get these twofers. And all of this stuff is released basically between 1970 and 1973. Brinsley Schwartz were a British country rock band, I guess you could say. You know, I'm not going to say they're like Poco or... or um, Firefall or anything like that because they're a pub band but they also leans over to maybe the American roots um, sound as well so that's what you're going to find on those Brinsley Schwartz albums if you want a kind of a cool little collection these are two compilations that came out by Brinsley Schwartz and they've put them both on one disc and they took off um, the, the, the songs that were duplicated uh, and this does contain tracks that isn't on any of the other CDs I just showed you. So Brinsley Schwartz, that was Nick Lowe's first band. Uh, if you want to know more information on Brinsley Schwartz and the um, debacle that happened at the very beginning of their career uh, in the U.S., go ahead and uh, uh, search that out online. And then, of course, Nick Lowe got into producing a lot of records. He, he was producing for Stiff Records. Uh, in fact, he became like their in-house producer. He produced The Damned, uh, Whole Wide World by uh, Reckless Eric. Pretty much almost every Elvis Costello album for like the first 10 years. Uh, so, I mean, his his production and, and his pop sense, he helped, you know, these, these artists sort of harness their sounds. Um, and he wasn't like Todd Rundgren where he, where he made them sound like Nick Lowe, but his pop sense does shine through in it. But then when he, you know, he put out a couple singles, uh, and then this was the American album. It was called Pure Pop for Now People, but the actual original album was called Jesus of Cool, with slightly different cover, as you can tell. 
Now this, as I said, the American cover, it's long out of print. But this right here, Jesus of Cool, is easily attainable because Yep Rock Records uh, basically reissued almost in his entire catalog. But this here, Jesus of Cool, the Yep Rock version contains every track that's on the UK Jesus of Cool and on the American Pure Pop for Now people. Uh, the very similar track listings. This is just glorious, wonderful pop. Niccolo manages to to use a lot of influences. You're going to hear a song that uh, you know has you know edgy punk, uh, power poppy sound, followed by something that starts out with a guitar that could have come straight off of the Jackson Five record, followed by something that could have come off a of Simon and Garfunkel record, followed by more pop, punk, power pop, country, whatever. He was always just taking his influences and distilling it down to a Nick Lowe sound. But it was always interesting and always fun. That is a fabulous album from start to end. Then came the big one. 1979 gave us Labor of Lust. This is the album with, as you probably know, Cruel to Be Kind, which was his biggest hit. Um, and this is just a stellar album. This was actually, believe it or not, it's put out under uh, the Nick Lowe name. But uh, it was actually the band Rock Pile, which was Nick Lowe, Dave Edmonds, Billy Bremner, and Terry Williams. And Nick Lowe's album featured all the members of Rock Pile. And Dave Edmonds' albums at this time also featured all the members of Rock Pile. Uh, but they couldn't legally record under the name Rock Pile. So uh, they would take all of Nick's songs and put them on his albums, take all of Dave's songs and put them on his albums. And it worked out great. But Labor of Lust, this is just, it's its just great guitar pop. I'm not going to call it power pop uh, or, or, you know, try to put it in a genre. It's just great melodic. And, and American Squirm was on the album and Skin Deep and, and so many great songs. Um, and that's available on Yep Rock now. Finally, the legal issues were over and 1980 gave us a rock pile album. And like I said, that is Nick Lowe, Dave Edmonds, Billy Bremner, and Terry Williams. Teacher Teacher was actually a hit over here. Uh, but there's uh, great songs like Wrong Again and Now and Always. And this actually has the four songs from the 7-inch um, EP that came with the album, which was uh, covers of Everly Brothers albums by Nick Lowe and Dave Edmonds. Uh, but the Rock Pile album that came out in 1980. And then, of course, uh, after this became a success and the band toured and stuff, they promptly broke up. And then Dave went off his solo career and Nick continued with his solo career. And that brings us to Nick the Knife, another great album. It sort of picks up where Labor of Lust left off, but uh, it's, it's maybe a, a lot more personal sounding, um, maybe a lot more intimate, uh, not as big and bombastic as that record but it's still got a lot of great songs like um burning and my heart hurts and uh let me kiss you and a lot of great songs on it this yep rock version has bonus tracks and i'm going to deviate a little bit because nick Lowe formed a band that at, at various times he called uh noise to go but basically it was like martin belmont who used to be in the rumor with uh graham parker it was um Bobby Irwin from the Sinceros on drums, uh, James Eller on bass, and Paul Carrick, formerly of Ace and Squeeze. Uh, he was his keyboard player. So that band went into the studio, and they also recorded Paul Carrick's Suburban Voodoo album. So this essentially sounds like a Nick Lowe album, a more soulful Nick Lowe album, uh, with Paul Carrick on lead vocals. And, and Nick Lowe's fingerprints are all over this record uh, the sound of it and, and and backing vocals and and uh and this isn't straight ahead pop um i'd say maybe a little more than half of it is a lot of it does have paul carrick's soulful side to it um but like always better with you is just oh i need you was a minor hit off of this album uh and that's what this album is most remembered for but that's paul carrick suburban voodoo 1983 brought us The Abominable Showman. And this was produced by Roger Pecurian and Nick Lowe. And this actually features a song, Cool Reaction, that was written by Peter Marsh and Andrew Howell from Blanket of Secrecy. Um, 
And they're also, um, at least Peter's featured on backing vocals. Uh, and Roger Bakirian was actually um, the third member of Blanket of Secrecy. And that's, of course, a whole nother ball of wax. But um, this album, you know, Rage and Eyes, um, Wish You Were Here, which was uh, a duet with Paul Carrick. Um, lots of great stuff on this. And this does have bonus tracks, as you could tell. That's right. I'm not going to pronounce that album title again. I'm going to give it one shot. The Abominable Showman. Came out in 1983. 1984 brought a little bit of humor with Nick Lowe and his Cowboy Outfit. Now, Cowboy Outfit is the name of his band on this album, but it's basically the same guys. It's uh, uh, Bobby Irwin, Paul Carrick, and Martin Belmont. But it's also the name of what he's wearing there. It's his Cowboy Outfit, as you can see there. Uh, half a Boy and Half a Man was a big song off of this. Um, a lot of, a lot of great songs. Um, LAFS, uh, which is love at first sight. It was a lot slicker, just like abominable showman and cowboy outfit. Um, they were, I don't want to say, well, well, I did just use the word slick, but I don't want to say that, that they were like you know, overly commercialized. It was just allowing somebody else to maybe point it in the right direction. Um, I think Carlin Fairley may have produced some of this album uh, Elvis Costello produced a track and a lot of great songs on it you know break away and you know like I said half a boy half a man uh G and the Rick and the three card trick is another great song that's another feather in his catalog cap then came the Rose of England this came out in 1985 this is the original UK cover and they used it for the um British one but the title track here is great and uh, actually, um, I knew the bride when she used to rock and roll. It's a song that he wrote many years before, but he actually re-recorded it with Huey Lewis and the News on this. And this is, you know, kind of more rootsy, less pop, but it's still a nice album. There's really not a bad Nick Lowe album. Hmm. Well, maybe there's one that's not as good as the others, and that one is called Pinker and Prouder Than Previous from 1988. Uh, there's a track on this produced by Dave Edmonds. So he sort of got back together with his old rock pile mate. And uh, Lover's Jamboree is a great little rock and roll number. Um, it's not a great Nick Law record, in my opinion. But it's gotten better with time. I know that when this first came out, I listened to it like once or twice. And then never really went back to it. Uh, so it's taken me years to to warm up to this record. But like I said, I mean, I, I that actually makes me feel bad. Because it's like... Damn, I should have been supporting uh, Nick Lowe all these years, but I didn't support him in 1988. Damn you, Schnee. Uh, but another fine record, though, if you like sort of a more rootsy sound, uh, just like uh, Rose of England. Um, but then it took two years for Nick Lowe to put out another record on a different label, um, and that is Party of One. This album is really the the first album in the transition period into what he would eventually become and i'll get to that obviously but this has tracks like all men are liars um i want to build a jumbo arc what's shaking on the hill uh, a lot of great tracks on there and this actually has bonus tracks this was originally released on warner brothers it was his one and only album with warner brothers I believe it was after this that little village got together i don't have a copy of little village i wasn't that big of a fan but that was the super group uh when he got together with ry cooter uh john hyatt and jim keltner and uh he's got one or two tracks on there that he sings lead on but then he stayed out of the studio for a while and he put out what i believe was the album that really kick-started the third phase of his career so if you're looking at the first phase that would be like brinsley schwartz uh he was in an earlier band called kippington lodge uh and that's everything pre new wave punk the second phase would be from jesus of cool uh up through pinker and prouder than previous party of one is kind of the transition and then comes the impossible bird which on first listen, I was like, eh, whatever. Second listen, uh, my heart melted. It's just an amazing album. It still has that rootsy vibe to it. Uh, you know, he, he does like um, uh, Soulful Wind on this. Uh, he does a great version of True Love Travels on a Gravel Road. He also does The Beast in Me, which was a song that he had written for his uh, then father-in-law, Johnny Cash. 
The Impossible Bird, great album, came out in 1994. And he finally landed for the third stage of his career with Dig My Mood. What started on The Impossible Bird and a little bit on Part A1 actually became reality. Every track in his album sounds like it could be a true blue American or British pop classic. It's just that more people need to hear them. Uh, it, it's more relaxed and, and, and maybe more acoustic and, and uh, folky and it's far from power pop. In fact, sometimes I think his later period is more inspiring than his early period. It's a shame that sometimes his stuff gets overlooked by the people who just want to hear um, Cruel to be Kind again or they just want to hear So It Goes. That stuff is great. You can listen to it on a CD, but uh, it's even greater when... You sort of grow with the artist. You mature with the artist. It took three years, but The Convincer came. 2001. Boy, what an album. Another great album. She's Got Soul is one of my favorite Niccolo songs, and that's on this. But he's really singing these songs, and they, I've said it before, they sound like, they, like they're classics plucked from the 30s, from the 40s, from the 50s. I mean, they're just gorgeous and, and, and wonderfully arranged and wonderfully produced. At My Age followed in 2007. He had another fine album. Unfortunately, you know, I mean, he used to release an album a year, and now it's like an album every three or four years. And that was followed by The Old Magic. Again, you know, it's hard to really pick songs off of these albums because they're fabulous, absolutely fabulous. One needs to drop the whole idea of power pop or new wave and give these albums a proper listen. The Old Magic came out in 2011, by the way. That was followed in 2013 by Quality Street, which wasn't exactly a Christmas album. It's more like a holiday or a seasonal album. It does have some Christmas songs, some originals, some folky songs, some really obscure things like Old Toy Trains. Uh, there's a great song in here called Christmas at the Airport. Uh, but this was a great album. It continued uh, along the same trend that these albums had had set and it was wonderful you know he still has a sense of humor uh, he, he he still has that joy of, of of loving the music that he's creating it's just that he's doing it for himself and for those around him and he's obviously he wants other people to like it but he's not letting the record companies and he's not letting the critics and he's not letting the internet tell him what to do Niccolo is doing it exactly the way that he should be doing it he's doing it the right way because he's still putting out great albums but then the sad thing about this is he has not put out an album since then. He has put out a couple EPs with low straight jackets. And I wanted to bring up something here real fast, a little bit off the beaten track. What's so funny about Peace Love and Nick Lowe? Low straight jackets. These are instrumental versions of Nick Lowe classics. And as you can tell, the album cover is a parody of the Jesus of Cool album. You can see those. And this features covers of uh, Nick Lowe songs. And you should definitely check that out. Now, Nick Lowe has a lot of compilations. You know, Nick Snacks and uh, Basher is, is probably the most well-known. And this features tracks from his Columbia years. And then the other, or the last one I'm going to show you, Quiet Please, is a two-CD collection that spans his entire career. Lots of great tracks, and that's on Yep Rock. Almost everything that I talked about here, including Low Straight Jackets, can be found on Yep Rock. So definitely check it out because they're doing a great job reissuing his music. But that is it. I love talking about Niccolo. I love talking about music. I love talking about I get all excited and, and goofy. Uh, but, you know, I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope it makes you go back and pull Niccolo uh, albums out of your collection or go to the store and and uh, buy some or get online and order some. Uh, I just beg you, please don't stream uh, Nick Lowe. Uh, please purchase product. We need to keep the business alive. We need to keep the industry alive. We need to make sure that the artists make money. But that's it for me. My name is Spaz, and I'm a CD junkie.